the green behemoth gets ready for the end, here's a look at the new release of the Hasbro Avengers Endgame, The Hulk. When the universe is in danger, Bruce Banner becomes the gamma-powered hero known as the Hulk. To get this review underway, we're going to take the tape measure and put it right to the very top of the Hulk. I'm actually starting these reviews with Hulk, seeing as Hulk was pretty useless in Infinity War. Yeah, you can say what you want, but Hulk was pretty useless. Six inches, or about 6.1 inches in height, is the new Avengers Endgame basic figures of the Hulk. We're going to go ahead and switch that over to centimeters and do that right now. Post haste, you're looking at a figure sitting at around 15 and a half, 15.6 to be exact. I was just kidding, Hulk, but not really. I really wasn't kidding. He didn't do much in Infinity War. I really hope he does a lot more in Endgame. And for the fact that we are getting ourselves a basic version of Hulk in the new Quantum Realm suits, I'm guessing hopefully Hulk will be making a little bit more of an appearance than he did in Infinity War. Before we discuss things further, let's have a look at the accessory that comes included with the Hulk. It looks like uh, kind of like a steel girder with uh, some concrete. It's just kind of like rubble that's been pulled away or found on the ground, uh, probably left over from a building. There's not much in the way of paint, I have to admit, other than really the gold that's been added to the steel part. The rest of the concrete, well, it's hollow and it's not really any paint on the side rods or anything like that. I guess what it needs to do is it, it he serves to hold it as a weapon. Let me show you how that goes about. Clearly one hand you can't do anything with. It's simply just a punching hand. So we'll keep the punching hand for this side for the time being. Um, to get this into his hand really involves you having to pry away the fingers from the thumb section. And often at times, even when you are putting this in, it does bend the thumb as a result of it as well. So I'm just going to pry everything away. There we go. And the Hulk's got this. Now, depending on which way you face it, obviously you may be ending up looking at the hollow end or you'd be looking at the finished end. But either way, you'll see it does certainly a number for Hulk's thumb. Poor Hulk's thumb. But that's what it looks like when it's in his hand. A notable thing to point out as well is see this little peg that's on the top? See right there on the very top? Well, you can actually use it. I don't know why you would want, want to, but you can use it as like a little kind of makeshift display stand. It clearly isn't big enough, as you can see, to hold the Hulk. Uh, as a result, it, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really serve much as a display stand. So I don't really know why they would put a peg on there that just so happens to be the same peg that's going to, you know, fit his the holes on the undersides of his feet. So you get this. I mean, I think we've actually, if I'm not mistaken, I've gotten this accessory, this very same accessory before, probably in a slightly different color. Anyways, we'll just put that to the side. Having a look at Hulk here. Now it seems like the majority of the basic figures and many of the Marvel Legends figures seem so far to be sporting these sort of silver colored suits. Speculation, so certainly based solely on just the trailer footage that we've seen so far, have speculated many fans to believe that these are Quantum Realm suits. As you can see, all of them are carrying and sporting these, but they're also sporting these which has led to a lot of conspiracy theorists running rampant online, trying to figure out what exactly these are. Theories such as temporary storage devices for holding the infinity crystals, because when the theory is that they're going to be traveling back in time to periods in which they can pull the stones before Thanos gets access to them, other speculation has been that these are activation points in which the nano suits, possibly co-created between Tony Stark and Hank Pym, would have generated these kind of nano suits that would have been able to go over top of their existing suits, their existing bodies. Even though really Hulk probably wouldn't have a full head-to-toe suit anyways. Um, clearly, I think my most speculation will sit on the fact that these are likely quantum suits and a lot of the reasoning why they're going to be able to go and travel back in time. They're probably going to be jumping in and out of the quantum realm. Again, all of it is speculation until finally the film comes out. So really all in the meantime we can really do is just kind of guess 
and look at figures like this and for the most part actually looking at this figure it's not a bad rendition of Hulk I'm not super crazy about the short coiffed hair that Hulk is now sporting um, the head sculpt actually isn't terrible by any stretch of the imagination but I don't know if I'm so super keen on the fact that he's got really short hair is that something I should be so set against is Hulk's hairstyle maybe not what's interesting though is leading then into the theory that these are nano created suits would certainly explain why at the last minute they have suits that fit all of them war machine has them all the way down to to uh black widow and captain america all have the same suits and nonetheless somebody was in the uh the sewing room all sewing and crafting these suits it certainly would explain possibly these being nano based why these could just envelop their body and then of course they would have the nano suits the uh, quantum realm suits underneath all that again it's all speculation what will be rather interesting is coming back to this video a year from now after of course Endgame has been out in theaters for a while and uh, people will all of course say well didn't you know it was this no I don't did you know back then <laughs> anyways Looking at the suits themselves, I can't help but also notice that there's a lot more silver being represented, representing here on the costume, rather than the whites that actually make their appearances in the movie. I'm actually kind of more keen on this kind of purplish gray color being utilized, rather than the very stark, no pun intended, white that's being utilized on their suits. Um, nice little texturing that's been added to it. Sadly, there's really not a whole lot of paint really on the back end of it. On the front end, of course, you get a little bit of burgundy that's kind of been trimmed around the top chest plate section. And you can see a rather familiar Avengers logo here as well. I like this kind of mesh texturing that they've put in kind of little peaked away areas that aren't, of course, the armor plating or whatever plating this may be. It's funny enough that actually Hulk I'm guessing is probably the only one that actually has bare feet sticking out from the suit. It certainly does beg the question if this is nano based, how it can envelop all of the parts of the body but then know to stop around fingers and stop around Hulk's toes. Okay, now we're getting really into conspiracy theories here. I can't help but actually feel, looking at the figure, that Hulk's proportions seem off. I know I'm always a big front runner when it comes to figure proportions, but I can't help but look at the fact that the top half of him looks like it's a moderately scaled figure. Okay, and the torso goes with the head, the arms are appropriate size, but it always seems to boil down for me to the legs. Legs are always sort of the deal breaker for me, and while I don't feel like this is necessarily a deal breaker for me for picking up these figures, I can't help but feel like Hulk's legs are little on the short side. Maybe I'm the only one that's seeing this. Now, these are basic class figures, and along with basic class figures, the fact that they're limited posability sort of is to be expected nowadays. As I've just indicated right now, you can move the arms out. Shame, though, unfortunately, aw shucks, you can't do the exact same thing on the lower legs. They're sort of stuck the way that they are. But the way that Hulk's posability is, is the following. His head rotates all the way around. Often at times when you are rotating the head, you'll start automatically seeing this big gap where a ball joint is kind of sitting underneath there. And if we just take the head off, you can kind of see how everything comes together. I still to this day feel that ball joints are the best methods of producing figures. It's super cheap. It involves very little molding on the toy company's part. But the trade-off is that you get a good amount of posability for the fact that it's just really sitting on a ball joint. Uh, the arms, as you probably already can see now, can hinge outward, and uh, you can also rotate them all the way around. You can bend at the elbow. You can rotate the arms all the way around. Sadly, sadly, there's no articulation for Hulk, Hulk's wrists. So or if you want to rotate the arms, you're only, only going to be able to rotate them at the elbow, not at the wrist. He has no waist articulation. Um, he does, however, have forward and back on the legs. And back really sort of is the stopping point. It's not quite back. By back, it basically means you can bring the figure's legs to that point. But unfortunately, due to his very square, bulk, bulky Hulk butt, you can't move the leg any bit further than that. As you can see, it just stops abruptly right there. Can it go further back? No, it, it can't. But, but, it can't go any further back than that. 
So there's the Hulk. Uh, I guess we can wrap up this video by bringing in once again the accessory that I don't really feel is necessary in all honesty. I feel if anything they sort of just threw the Hulk a bone. It's also really difficult to get into his hand and at the end of the day I think I'm just perfectly content more so that Hulk looks pretty good. The accessory is just kind of, like I said, an afterthought. The only thing that really is the problem for me with a lot of these figures that I'm seeing in store shelves, though, is I really want to be able to see variation. And based on what I'm seeing so far, it seems like all the figures that are coming out, maybe except for, say, the likes of, maybe, say, the likes of War Machine, which I was also able to pick up, um, all the figures seem to have the quantum suits. The quantum suits... So if this isn't necessarily your favorite look for these superheroes, you're probably going to be seeing a whole lot of this look for the entire lineup of Avengers Endgame figures. One thing that works generally well with a lot of these figures is that Hasbro releases these as basic class figures. I know they limit their posability, but the trade-off is they're a much more affordable figure if kids are interested in picking them up for themselves. Anybody clamoring for super articulated versions of these figures would likely want to be trekking to the city of Marvel Legends. These basic class figures are ideal for kids that are looking, like I said, to pick up figures of their favorite heroes from the upcoming release of Avengers Endgame. The thing, though, is, as I said, all the figures are likely going to be having the same sort of outfit. So after a while of collecting all of these, you'll sort of get used to seeing the exact same colors and the exact same look, no matter if it's one hero to the other. Hulk just benefits from the fact that he's a slightly bigger figure, so his quantum suit that he's wearing, quote unquote, is a uh, quantum suit. But it's slightly bigger, I'm sure, than the others that are in uh, that are coming out, obviously. Thanos is going to be a little bit bigger as well. I managed to pick him up also. Still curious as the fact that if these suits are nano-based, interesting that they wouldn't cover Hulk's feet. I guess you have to program them in advance. You have to tell exactly the program. Okay, well, Hulk likes to use his toes. So try your best not to cover his toes. Hulk doesn't like to wear shoes. Either way, though, again, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, they should be now hitting retail store shelves. And the price point for these, I think they were about $14. Don't quote me on that. And you can quote me, actually, on that quote about not quoting me on that. About $14 were the basic class Avengers figures. And so far, I've picked up a couple of these. So, as you can probably guess it, expect reviews to follow. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the new upcoming release. This was the Hasbro Avengers Endgame. I keep wanting to say Infinity War. I just feel like we have gotten so much Infinity War stuff over the last few years, even after the movie has long gone. I'm going to have to now kind of program myself like a nano suit to kind of get around the toes. have to keep starting to say Avengers Endgame, not Infinity War. But we're going to have a whole bunch of end game figure reviews coming up in future reviews, future videos that is. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below if you certainly haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys next time.